Pro landscape photographers time blend and focus blend their images to create world-class results. Find out how. So I've come to a favourite location of mine today. But there is a particular scene which I've been trying to photograph for some time but I keep walking past because various elements don't add up. Either the shadows are too deep, the reflections are too strong, it's too contrasty, um, the foreground is too close, the water's too fast, it's too slow and I've always dismissed it and walked on. But today's video is all about making decisions, it's about bringing elements of images together and deciding what it is that you want your final image to look like. And we're going to use um, some blending techniques later in the video inside of Photoshop to achieve that. Now I don't know exactly until I set up the composition and I set up the images what I'm going to do. So I'm going to talk you through those when we get there. But it could be a combination of time blending to get the um, water speed correct. It could be a combination of um, some focus stacking and blending some focus stacked images together to, to get front to back sharpness. It could be a number of different things. And that's what we need to do as photographers. And this, this is what makes the difference sometimes between a professional looking image and one that is a little bit amateurish, is being able to look into the scene, decide what it is you need to capture, so that when you get back inside the editing suite, you've got all the raw data and all the raw information to bring these things together and create a harmonious image. So I'm going to set up my composition, then I'm going to talk you through it. And later on in the video, we're going to go into the editing suite and I'm going to show you how to combine these images together to transform it back into what I had in my mind when I was out in the field. And that's where we need to start. We need to start with the end in mind, what we're thinking about. So no further hanging about, and I want a coffee anyway, and uh, we'll go and see what we can set up. So the um, subject that I'm shooting is just over my shoulder. I've come to an elevated position on the riverbank where I'm able to look down through into the distance, and it's quite a nice light airy scene as you go through the image but there are some very deep dark shadowy areas. The water at this point is also moving very very quickly because it narrows slightly and where the water becomes narrowed by the riverbanks it forces the stream together and that water's got to go through faster to make it through or it would just flood. So this creates a number of issues for me as a photographer and the issues that I've got is that the speed of the water means that I want to be working at a fairly quick shutter speed and to get the deep sort of exposure correct I want that to be a little bit slower. So I've got an issue where if I correct for exposure I'm going to blow out the water and I'm also going to have hyper smooth water which isn't what I like. I like to have a little bit of texture. So that's the first consideration I've got. I want a shutter speed that will capture enough texture in the water that will allow the, the water to be correctly exposed but also deal with those shadowy areas as well. So we've got a bit of time blending and also exposure to blending to think about at the same time. Let's talk about the composition because that creates another issue. So let's get to the camera and put some video up for you so you can see what I'm looking at. So I'm going to crop this image um, finally in Photoshop down to a 5.4 um, crop because I think it's going to give it a little bit more strength to the image. Also what I don't want to do is include too much of the top of the sky in it because it comes a little bit too bright and it will compete with the water that I want your eye to be drawn down to and look at. So we're going to crop the top of the image off. I'm also going to take a little bit off the bottom but not a lot. So compositionally, I talked before about harmony and the way I've composed this is to have some bank on the left and the right hand side which balances the image out. Now there's not a huge amount that I can do about the white water sort of rushing out the side of the image on the right hand side but what I can do is make sure it doesn't flow out through the strongest point of the image. If it was right in the corner it creates a little bit too much tension 
So I've tilted the camera down slightly to include some of the foreground. And already some of you that have seen some of my videos on um, focus stacking or realize that that's going to possibly cause a depth of field issue because this bit of ground in the foreground where we've got this nice mossy bank with the autumnal leaves in there runs the risk now of being out of focus so we now have a little bit of um, blending to do to get that depth of field correct but we're not going to do a full-on focus stack because this image doesn't really require it or need it all it needs is a little bit of sharper detail in the foreground. So we're going to blend that together as well. I need to take an overall general scene, which will give me a nice level of exposure um, for that nice light airy feel with that top lighting coming down through. We need to take a correctly exposed and correctly timed photograph of the water. And we need to take something which brings in that foreground so that we've got some nice um, depth of field in there as well and it's nice and sharp. What we're going to do next is we're going to take the general scene. So I'm actually using the camera in live view because it's quite easy for me to do that. And we're going to be taking that image at f11 at about 2.5, 3.2 seconds, something like that, which seems to be working reasonably well. I'm also using my uh, cable release because I just, it sort of suits me really. So that's 3.2 seconds. Whilst we're doing that, what we can do is we can just take the, um, so it's at the same exposure, we'll just take the, um, the sharp foreground at the same time, same exposure settings. It's important when you do this sort of thing to consider the exposure, make sure it is balanced. So if you're gonna blend two parts together of the same exposure, take them at the same time. So that's that bit done. Now we can go and focus on the water a bit more. We're going to still shoot at f11, but we're going to take a few different pictures. I'm going to take my first one at one third of a, sorry, at 1.3 seconds. I like a bit more texture in my water, so I'm going to go up to half a second. Now that's causing me another little bit of an issue in that, um, it's getting a little bit too dark, so I'm going to have to increase the ISO slightly just to get that water correct. So half a second, F11, ISO 320. Using the cable release. Okay, so I like that. It's too dark for the background, but when I blend that water in together, it's going to work quite well. I think I'll just increase the ISO up to 400 though. So half a second, F11, ISO 400. This should be the final shot for the water. Yeah, that's the one I'm gonna use, I quite like that. I can probably slow, oh, I don't know. It's so difficult. I can probably actually slow that down a bit more. Let's go for a third of a second or a quarter of a second. I might actually decide what I want to use in a minute. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. I'm going to have to manipulate the water a little bit in Photoshop because it looks a little bit muddy, but it's difficult to get it all in exposure. But I've gone for a quarter of a second, F11 and ISO 400. So let's see what that looks like when we get back on the camera. Sorry, back on the computer. So let's get back to the office and uh, join these images together so you can see the finished result. Because I really do want to take you through the full process. I'll see you back at the office. Before we sit down and finally edit um, our final image, I want to talk to you about a few little points which are really important. When we were out in the field, I mentioned about starting with the end in mind, about how important it was to make sure that when you return to the editing suite, you've got the information that you need. 
That might sound immediately obvious, but it's not. When you're out in the field and you're taking those photographs, especially if you're a new photographer, it's very easy to get wrapped up in the moment, which is absolutely fine because you should enjoy the moment, but it's very easy to forget to take certain images. It's very easy to get back, to start editing and go, oh, I wish I had an image that had sharp foreground. I wish I had an image which had um, the sky exactly how I wanted it. And it's gonna become very clear when we start editing why that's important. So let's get into Lightroom and have a look at the set of images that we're gonna edit. I've, I've already pre-selected the three images which we're going to use for today's edit. And I've put those up on the screen. So let's not mess about, let's jump straight into Lightroom and have a look at those pictures now. So if we look at the um, first image here on the left hand side of the screen at the moment, this is the image that we're going to use probably as, a, as our base image. And if you look at this quite closely, you can see the exposure is generally quite good. And what we have got, of course, is a lot of um, movement and blurred water. And I like a little bit more texture in my water. The next image along is the one which I want to use for bottom left-hand corner. This is where we're going to be but we're doing a bit of a blend to get in that sharper area. Now, I hope you remember from earlier in the video that I focused just on that patch of ground in the bottom left hand corner and the reason for that was quite simply I wanted to be able to make sure that that was the bit that we were focusing on and that we were going to sort of like see in the final in the final image. What we've also got on the right hand side is um, the water. Now I like a lot more texture in my water. I don't like it too creamy, but I do like to have that sense of flow in there as well. But I also like to see some of the texture in the rocks and the texture of the water. So I get best of, best of both worlds. And that's what we've got here. Now the process of editing these inside of um, Photoshop is where it gets all very interesting. Because we're gonna combine these three elements, the base image, the sharp bottom left hand corner and the water together. We're going to blend them together to create um, this combination image which incorporates all these parts. So that's very easy to do. Um, we select the three images that we want to do and then we go up onto the top of the screen and we go photo, edit in and we come down to open as layers in Photoshop. And the reason we're going to do that is because we don't want them as individual image. We want all of these images open together as separate layers because once we've done that, we can then work on them individually. So it's just loading all those layers in for me now. When it's finished, we're gonna go on to the next stage. There we go, it doesn't take too long if you've got a reasonably quick computer. So the next bit, we wanna make sure that every single layer that we've got lines up properly. So I've just selected all of these layers together in the bottom right hand corner layers palette. And we can go up to edit and come down to auto align layers. And that'll give us a number of options. If we were doing a panorama or something, we can have cylindrical, perspective, spherical, all these other different things. But all we want to do is click on auto and we just want it to line up these images together. And what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that when we start blending things together, we haven't got any ghosting. Every image lines up on top of the other one. And that's really, really very critical. To make it easy for yourself, sometimes it works better to, um, to actually uh, rename some of these layers. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to call this one water. But I've got all the layers loaded in, all labelled up, we know what they are. Now we need to think about how we're going to blend them together. And we're going to do that using something called layer masks. It does exactly what it says on the tin, it masks. And it can either hide everything, reveal anything, reveal everything, sorry. Or we can modify that by painting on the mask to bring different elements forward, or hide different elements. So what we're going to do first of all is rearrange these layers. So I want the base on the bottom and then I want the sharp corner and then the water. And then with the sharp corner, we want to actually put this in so that we, that we hide everything. 
So what that will allow us to do is see everything that's underneath of it. So when we're on here, we go to the top, we go layer, layer mask, hide all. And as soon as you do that, it will allow you to see through to everything underneath. We can do exactly the same with the water because now you can see that we've hidden it. We've hidden everything, it's looking through to the water layer. But we want to look straight through the water layer to the layer underneath. So we're gonna click on water, layer, layer mask, hide all. And the water will now disappear and we're seeing that base image. So now let's start thinking about doing some of the blending because this is where the magic happens. So if we pick the sharp corner again at the top, that layer, and um, we can zoom in just so we can see this area down the bottom. Look, there we go, that's good enough. We then want to actually uncover what's underneath um, some of these parts. Now the way that we do that is we pick up a brush. We're going to use a soft round brush and if we press the, put on the uh, capitals key, caps lock, it'll actually show us the size of that brush. Now what we can do is we can use the white paint. So if you haven't got white selected, we select white and then we can paint over the top. And what you'll find when we paint on that mask, it's now starting to reveal what's underneath. And as you do that, and you see what's underneath, you can just do it to blend it into those sharp sections. And there we go, that's that sharp bit done. So we can zoom back out to 100% now, fit on screen. Now, all we need to do now is repeat exactly the same for the water. Now I'm going to do the water a little bit different because I, I want to be a little bit more subtle and more gentle with it. So when we're painting on the water mask, we can actually change the flow. Now I'm going to drop it down to about 50% because that, that's fine for what I want to do. Now this is where the water really sort of transforms itself because we can now start to transform the water um, by painting onto that mask. And as we start to do that, look, you should be able to start to see that water come in look. Now it's really important, this is why I set it out in the field, that you actually control the exposure. Because if the exposures were wildly wrong, you wouldn't be able to do this. It wouldn't look right. Because it would need additional work doing on it. We'll just take that water down into that corner a little bit. Now we can always adjust the flow, again, just take that down a little bit more. I want some more detail in the top of this area. So now I've got the nice sharp corner, I've got the water zoomed in, I've got the general exposure exactly how I want it and I can go in to do some more edits if I want to. I'm gonna finish this off very quickly inside of um, Photoshop this time. So we can just click on this, crop it in a little bit. Remember I said I wanted that 5-4 crop? Yeah, we're happy with that. There's a 5-4 crop. And if we wanted to, we could um, go further with it. I tend to do a lot of my finishing editing over in Lightroom. So all I'm going to do is go back into Lightroom and add a slight vignette to the image. But that's basically what I wanted to show you in today's video. Um, how to um, blend these images together. So let's have a look at the final finished image. And uh, you can tell me what you think in the comments and whether you think this is worthwhile and if you're going to use this sort of thing in your own photography.
Okay, well I really do hope that you enjoyed today's video and you found it useful and maybe at some point in the future you'll be able to incorporate this way of working into your own um, images. Like I said, really do think when you're out on the field exactly why you're going to take the image, how you're going to edit it at the end and how these things are going to work together to create that sense of harmony and uh, really get an image with gels together. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate but put the comments below and ask me those questions and I'll be delighted to um, answer them. But for now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Even consider subscribing to the channel. There's more great content on here and lots more content to come. Check out my website and uh, until then, get out, enjoy your own photography and I'll see you next time.